Hello Virgo. My name is Victoria Martin. I'm going to tell you about November 2015 and you are one of the big players. This will count for Virgo Sun Sign but also Virgo Ascendant. So November 2015 presents a bunch of options. Um, I'm going to try to put this in the affirmative. The roles are you could be a hero, you can be a stoic or a provocateur. You can expect that big issues will maybe explode as excessive, but will be in the world stage and in your life. These might not be your issues because you're kind of in a lucky year. But everyone, and you included, you want to be alert and stay cool during the month of November. It's an extraordinary month. You want to probably toughen up a little bit, but avoid self-sacrifice. So you want to be in that nice balanced place. So here's the way the month breaks down. There are four main events that I'm looking at in November. The first half is a little better than the second half. So in the first half, we get November 1st through 3rd, Venus is conjunct Mars, and that's, you know, pleasant and active and exciting. And then we have a new moon, November 9th through 13th, and that's your opportunity to set things up the way you want to. So you want to take that in a very, very serious uh, time frame. Because then, starting November 16th, moving all the way through November, December 6th, Saturn is forming a square to Neptune, and you're going to find out what that's about. But essentially, it's a little crunchy. And then all of these potent issues that have been kind of smoldering in the background are going to come into bursting into prominence in the full moon phase, which is November 23rd through 27th. So that's your month. Now, we'll start off with the good news, which is that Venus conjunct Mars, it brings romance, arts, and money issues. These are going to heat up, could be very dynamic. In this case, Venus and Mars in your first house, you are the instigator. You are the person that embodies all of people's hopes and wishes. You're the person, you are the dispenser of good things. Kind of cool. It's a, it's a job. Um, the Venus-Mars conjunction in the agricultural goddess, but also uh, being affected by stars in Leo and the cup, the crater. So let's get into these stars. Okay, so we have the um, star Zavijava, which brings congeniality and negotiating. It's going to advance your academic skills. We also have the tail of Leo, which is how you signal your followers and use your curiosity. And the cup, which is a vessel for sharing, and it, it brings you into the forefront as either an environmentalist or a collector. Now, Venus-Mars conjunction is known for grand romance, bursting culture, uh, you know, sensual or potent experiences. And you, again, you're the matchmaker, you're the leader, you're the person who is the role model. So you're very important. It's best to go for the glory, draw upon your own qualities that are pleasurable, beautiful, and good, and be dispensing all these good things. Okay, so then we switch to third house emphasis, sun in your solar third house, so you have a lot of meetings. And it's through your meetings and visiting and hosting, through your media skills, that you are going to be setting things up to be in your favor for the rest of the month. So the new moon is always open and receptive. It's hopeful and wishful, can be introverted. So you want to surpass that introversion and set up your meetings and do a lot of visiting. This new moon, very interesting because it's in the um, overlap between the scales of Libra and the claws of Scorpio. So it's a really interesting part of the zodiac. And above we have Ophiuchus, which is the shaman. And below we have Centaur, which is the um, man horse. So instinct and intellect. So a lot of interesting action here on this new moon. So uh, we have a love of arts and academia represented by this area of the overlap. And use strategy, accounting, and, and law, you know, knowledge of the laws. And in, in the third house, you know, really use meetings to reach out and maybe seek or develop some excitement within meetings, you know, really be explore. But also, um, you can remove obstacles through interaction at meetings, through visiting and hosting. And, uh, you know, gifts, if, if you want to bring a gift when you're visiting, or, you know, somehow play up flavor or scent would be a good idea. So plans are, are confidence builders and obstacle removers. That's the emphasis. Strategic time frame, use keen awareness and observation. So the big event in November, Saturn square Neptune. So we have Saturn kind of encroaching or implying uh, Saturn being uh, organization, criticism, implying analyzing, glamour, sensitivity, spirituality, toxins, and chaos. So in this case, Saturn in your fourth house, so you're really establishing a firm basis for happiness, whereas people who are your partners might be living in this kind of magical bubble, and they may be afflicted by toxins or chaos. So it's, it's either maybe not you, but maybe the whole family is working together 
to bring some uh, enhanced order to uh, your partnerships or even I have, can have an influence on your public persona. So it seems like family is representing a more conservative type of influence. So your family is known to be tough and tenacious, ambitious and successful. So th you know that's a strong point for them. And you, know, you tend to be idealistic about partnerships. And so um, you know, here's the thing: is like these two areas are are impacting each other. Maybe you feel that your partner should have a more conservative schedule, or um, more conservative about their exposure to toxins. Um, either way, those people or projects living in an ideal world may be impractical or lacking protocol compliance. And everyone's going through this in some area of their life. This is excellent character growth potential. Coping mechanisms and adjustments are activated. You maybe you can bring in more reinforcement from the family to um, enhance um, the reality aspect that your partners um, harbor. And uh, maybe even the family can help with competition. Okay, the full moon is going to bring these issues to a head. The full moon it will illuminate, give, provide re revelations about your purpose in life, the triumph over obstacles, and there's going to bring a lot of vivid events. This is cl close to the bullseye in Taurus, so it's uh, the idea of a judgment day. And uh, the bullseye is known for confidence, influence, contract-oriented things. Um, it's also the full moon near the Pleiades cluster, which is advising that you guard against harsh judgments and be creative in your career planning. Use optimism, favor science, remain in a state of grace. Okay, and just to summarize this thing, uh, Full Moon is about revelations, but the most challenging time frame of 2015 is a thriller movie, and it brings important choices vis-a-vis -vis fight or flight, and stay out of bad neighborhoods, bad situations, stay out of the crossfire, know what and whomever you can save, um, but maintain your integrity. So, uh, so here again, the first half of November is the setup time. The second half is coping with the challenges that come up, especially on the full moon. And so just a sneak preview for December for Virgo 2015, everyone are dealing with this ongoing uh, revolution, but um, we all want to be hip friendly and tech savvy. And uh, we're going to deal with some spillover from November, but I mean, December is a really pretty decent month. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. My name is Victoria Martin, and I hope it goes well for you. You are in a good luck year, Virgo, Virgo rising. So let's hope you can make the most of it. Bu akşam seminerimizi canlı olarak mobil uygulamamız üzerinden yapıyoruz.